Hello, and welcome to another video from War Secrets. The Leopard 1 tank, designed, developed, and produced in West Germany, is one of the best main battle tanks till date. This was one of the most widely exported tanks in the world, and is still in use in a number of countries. Even now, as Ukraine battles Russia, it could receive the German Leopard 1 MBT to aid its fight. History of the Leopard 1 When the war ended in Europe, Germany was eventually divided into two sides. West Germany, which was allied to NATO, and East Germany, which came under the control of the Soviet Union. The situation remained the same for most of the Cold War. West Germany was accepted into NATO in 1955. With the threat of an attack from the Soviet Union, West Germany was faced with the prospect of developing a combat vehicle as the main battle tank in the army. Since the end of the war in 1945, this tank was the first to be indigenously developed and produced. The French and West Germans worked together to build a common battle tank as it would control the cost of development. The project name for this design was Standard Panzer. While both countries worked well, they became limited by their technology. The Standard Panzer created a list of their requirements in 1957 which included standard NBS protection, use of the British L7 105mm main gun, and more. During this time, the project design was named Europa Panzer. Three German firms were a part of the initial proposals along with a single French team. In 1958, the Italians formally joined the team as they also required a next-generation combat tank for their military at a cost. Multiple prototypes were built and evaluated, and the design phase extended. Against all competition, only a Porsche design prototype was evaluated successfully. It wasn't surprising, as Porsche had a lot of experience in this field since World War II. The winning design was officially announced in 1963. The pre-production design was called the Zero Series. At this time, the French were working on their own prototype which they thought was better suited for their armored corps. They left the Europa Panzer project and completed their prototype which later became the AMX-30 MBT. The Italians also left a joint tank project with the German at some point. Germany, with its new design in place, ramped up the production in 1965 out of the Krauss Maffei facility in Munich. The tank was designed as the Leopard 1, a name that was synonymous with speed. It was also in line with the feline names of previous tanks, such as the Panther and the Tiger, who were a huge part of World War II. Leopard 1 Main Battle Tank Equipment So let us look at the build and specifications of this great battle tank. The Leopard 1 Main Battle Tank, or MBT, was divided into three main sections the front hole, the turret bustle, and the rear set engine compartment. It was heavily armored, but not as much as the MBTs of the Soviet Union that it was supposed to face off against. It could carry a minimum armor of 0.33 inch and a maximum of 2.75 inches on top of the hole. The turret armor ranged from 2 inches on the front and 2.4 inches on the sides and the rear. The turret mantlet was also 2.4 inches thick and provided additional protection to the front of the turret. The turret had a radio, 13 ready-made rounds, and a basket at the rear. This tank's defining feature was the large radiator grills on the flanks. The initial versions of the Leopard 1 had a simple cast turret on a welded hole. It allowed a crew of four people, the driver on the front right of the hole with the ammunition stored to his left. Behind him was a place for the standard commander and gunner on the right and loader on the left. With an 830 horsepower Daimler Benz V10 diesel engine, the power to weight ratio of the Leopard 1 MBT was almost equal to the French AMX 30 MBT, which was 4.4 tons lighter than the Leopard. The main armament of the Leopard was the British 105mm L7 main gun, which could fire projectiles at nearly 4,500 feet per second enough to pierce through armor. This gun was wildly used at the time. The gun also had the capability to fire other types of ammunition available to NATO, like highly explosive anti-tank rounds. The tank had a coaxial MG3 or an FN MHz machine gun for the gunner and another one for the commander. The tank also featured two 7.62mm NATO machine guns, one of which was coaxial and the other was mounted on a ball pivot on top of the turret. The coaxial machine gun was originally meant to determine range for the main gun, but was later replaced by an optical gun sight. 
The Leopard 1 has a range of 372 miles and is capable of sustained road speeds of up to 40 miles per hour. The engine is designed in a way that it can be removed and replaced in the field within 20 minutes. Development History The Leopard 1 was built in different batches. As the development project of the first Leopard started in November 1956, it was in a bid to develop a modern tank that could replace the Bundeswehr's American-built M47 and M48 Patton tanks, which were rapidly getting outdated due to the ever-changing technological trends at the time. This was a major change in the German tank design philosophy. The previous tank designs, such as the Panther or the Tiger, placed emphasis on the armor of the tank as well as the gun. They decided that there was not much use in trying to design a tank with heavier armor for defense because no matter what they developed, they would not be able to create anything strong enough to defend the tank from being hit. Anything that was thrown at the armor would pierce through it. So instead, they decided to focus on the mobility and on firepower in the gun modeled on the British L7 105mm gun, as well as a cross-country performance that was way ahead of any other designs during that time. The tank came into service in 1965 when full-blown production started. As the first batch was completed, these tanks were bought by many NATO countries, among which were Australia, Canada, Greece, Lebanon, Turkey, and Italy. The Leopard 1, though, did have its flaws, as comparatively thinner armor could easily be penetrated by Soviet's T-62 and T-72 tanks. However, this thin armor was a reason for the tank's amazing speed. The Leopard went through a lot of updates and evolution. The first was the Leopard 1A1, which was produced as a replacement for the original Leopard 1. The new gun stabilization mechanism in the tank allowed it to fire even while it was moving. There were also new skirts along the sides to provide protection to the upper tracks, as well as a new thermal jacket on the gun barrel that would control the heating. Next came the Leopard 1A2, which had an improved turret armory, a better NBC suite, as well as night vision equipment. The main gun had improved accuracy with the addition of a PZB200 series image intensifier. A newer version also received digital radios. The Leopard 1A3 came with some extra space in the interior, a new gun mainlet, and an independent sight system for the commander of the tank. The Leopard 1A4 was similar to the 1A3 from the outside, but it included a computerized fire control system. The EMES 12A1 sighting system to aim it along with an independent night sighting system for the commander. The Leopard 1A5 is usually considered to be the standard Leopard 1 today. The turrets were modified, the EMES 18 fire control system was used on this model, and more effective ammunition was used. The Netherlands developed an improved version of the A5 called the Leopard 1 Verbiturd, which is used by the Chilean army. The Leopard 1A6 prototype was upgraded with additional armor on the turret and featured a 120mm L44 gun. However, this project ended in 1987, as by this time the Leopard 2 was wildly in use and the 1A5 was a better choice at a much lower cost. Operational History As we know, the Leopard 1 was bought by many countries after the production of the first batch. The Australian government purchased around 101 vehicles in all. The Leopards arrived soon in Australia in 1976 after the army decided to replace the British Centurions. The Belgian army bought 334 Leopard 1BE between 1968 and 1971. These tanks found a place among the eight tank regiments and the armor school. The army decided to upgrade 132 Leopards to the standard of the A5. The Canadian Army acquired 114 Leopard C1 tanks, which were similar to the Leopard 1A3 to replace the Centurion tank. Denmark bought 120 Leopard 1A3 tanks, the delivery of which was completed in 1978. Soon after, in 1992, Denmark got 110 more 1A3 tanks. All of these tanks, along with the first 120, were upgraded to the Leopard 1A5 DK. Italy had to replace a lot of M47 Patton tanks. The Italian army was not satisfied with the M60 Patton and placed the first order for Leopard 1 in 1970. The British and the French people designed their own tanks, while a few nations were getting free tanks from the Americans through foreign military aid. So any nation that had to buy tanks from somewhere most often chose to buy a Leopard. Did you enjoy learning about the Leopard 1 tank? If you did, don't forget to like and share the video.
Subscribe to our channel if you want more content like this in the future.